If your Bible is still open to Matthew 19, in verse 16, that opening question from the young man of privilege, teacher or rabbi, what good thing must I do to get eternal life? Now, for those of us who care about preaching the gospel, this is the dream question, right? I mean, this is what we secretly kind of hope our coworker or our friend or Aunt Sally or whatever will ask us, you know, John Mark, so uh, tell me, what good thing must I do to get eternal life? Well, let me tell you, Aunt Sally, or whatever. And based on my church experience, and I know a ton of you did not grow up in church, but a lot of you did, and if your experience was anything like mine, I know what Jesus is supposed to say here. He's supposed to say something like, do. You don't need to do anything. That's religion. That's man earning his way to God. That's works-based righteousness. That's not the gospel. I'm about to do it all for you on the cross. All you need to do is believe. But does Jesus say that? No, in fact, his reply is quasi-heretical, and it's, or at least it's a bit of a head-scratcher. Basically, what does he do? He tells the man to keep the Ten Commandments. All these I have kept, the man says in verse 20. What do I still lack? Interesting. Jesus doesn't disagree that the man has kept the Ten Commandments, and both the man and Jesus are aware that there is something more than the Ten Commandments, that whatever salvation is, it's not less than morality, but it's a lot more than morality. Then Jesus tells him to sell all his possessions and come apprentice under him. Now, that's just not what Jesus is supposed to say. That is theologically, in my opinion, and pastorally malpractice. That's dangerous. You could really get down a weird road with that Jesus. You have to be careful around Jesus. He will just mess up your good theology. Now, here's a little backstory to make sense of Jesus' reply. The man, contrary to popular opinion, is not asking, how do I go to heaven when I die? For sure, as a first century Jew, he would have had some concept of life after death and maybe even a place called the heavens with the living God. But first century Jews, as we said last week, and again, if you're not here, please listen to that podcast, were waiting on pens and needles for the Messiah, a way of saying the long-awaited king of Israel and of the world from God himself to arrive and usher in the kingdom of God, the reign of God, not only over Israel but over the world, not only over Jews but a new Jew plus Gentile family, a whole new order of love and peace and justice. The man And Jesus is clearly, either he is that Messiah or at least he's claiming to be that Messiah. The man is asking, what do I need to do to make sure that I'm a part of that kingdom with you, Jesus? In our language, that I'm on the right side of history, both now and forever. Now, part of the problem is the phrase eternal life is notoriously difficult to translate into English. I hear the word eternal, and I just think of life without end, life forever and ever and ever. And it's not that it doesn't really mean that, it's that that's just not the primary meaning. A growing number of scholars argue that a much better translation is the life of the age to come. Brenda Klinge, in her book, Image of Salvation in the New Testament, writes, eternal life is primarily qualitative rather than quantitative. More about quality than quantity. Eternal describes the kind of life one has in Christ. Case in point, the one time that eternal life is defined in the New Testament, it is by Jesus himself, so we must pay very close attention. John 17, 3, very clear, blatant definition. This is eternal life, that they know you, the only true God and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. Eternal life in Jesus' mind is knowing the Father and the Son, not knowing about God the way that I know about Japan or something but have never been there, but knowing God the way that I know my wife or my son or my best friend from personal experience. It's participating in the life of God himself, in the inner life of the Trinity, the love between the Father and the Son. John Orberg writes, to know God is to live in a rich, moment-by-moment, gratitude-soaked, participatory life together. And notice that this, in this story that we just read, eternal life, verse 16, 
the kingdom of God, verse 23 and verse 24, and salvation, verse 25, are all used interchangeably. Kingdom, salvation, eternal life. That, for me at least, that, that cleared things up the moment I noticed that. It explains why, for those of you that are on the theology nerd side, all four of us, it explains why Jesus' primary message, if you've read through the New Testament, his primary message, at least in Matthew, Mark, and Luke, is the kingdom, but in the Gospel of John and in the New Testament as a whole, the kingdom theme is still there. That language is still very much used, but it's no longer the main dominant theme. In Paul's writings, which he's the most prolific author in the New Testament, his primary message is arguably salvation, and the writer John's primary message is eternal life. But here, those are all used interchangeably, meaning those are not three different messages. They are three different ways of saying the same thing. Kingdom, salvation, eternal life. As Tim Keller put it, one gospel, many forms. This means that Jesus' summary of the gospel from last week, the kingdom of God is at hand, isn't a one-size-fits-all summary. There's breathing room and a little space for you and me, or for sure for Paul and John, to contextualize the gospel to Greco-Romans in first century Athens or Rome or Corinth and to secular Westerners in 21st century Portland or LA. But still, even if you like have that kind of nuance, Jesus' answer is still, let's be honest, like sounds a little bit heretical. It sounds like you're not supposed to say that, Jesus. It's just wildly different than what I would expect based on my hearing of the gospel for decades. Could it be that Jesus' view of the gospel and with its salvation and eternal life itself is different than the one that a lot of us grew up with? 